Ready. Play. So it's going to be one of those matches? It looks like it, doesn't it? First point. And already a drawn out rally. 15 month. 19 shot rally to start things. What's interesting, a couple other things that Gorn did tell me, other than when we were laughing about, <laughs> about how his, his, his demeanor in the box. <laughs> he did tell me that Djokovic in the deuce court will try to serve in volley sometimes out wide to the forehand. He won't be as do comfortable here? doing it in the ad, is what he said. Hmm. Don't know if I believe it. He's just giving me, he might not want to tell me. But the other thing he said is he's going to have to be willing to suffer. He's going to have, he knows he has to be out here five hours possibly to beat Medvedev. And I said, well, I'm sure he's ready to do that. And he said, yes. <laughs> It's interesting, though, that that Djokovic would hesitate to serve a volley in the ad court. Is that because he knows how good this man's backhand is? It must be. Huh? That is what they said. Mm. But to me, I don't care how good your stroke is. If you're that far back, you should be able to successfully serve a volley sometimes. <laughs> the fans inside Ash. And Djokovic has come out 30, backhand down the line often. He's not he's not afraid to change directions. Obviously he has a nice backhand down the line, but he's hitting it more often than I remember. after losing to Medvedev, said this about his return. He's one of the best returners on tour. That obviously is amazing how he can return from the back of the court really deep and powerful. And when I do serve him volley, he always finds the passing shot from, you know, from his house. <laughs> That's Alcaraz on Medvedev's return. And really, look how far back he is. It just feels as a can, can't you serve 63 miles an hour out wide and get an inch from the net? Beauty. 
Robbie Depp. Tennis IQ is that the, the mid-match calculations are so good. But how well can you deal with their short ones? Oh. So one other thing to look at a little bit in the tournament. Early in the tournament, Medvedev wasn't happy with his forehand. Wasn't feeling the forehand, and also second serve. He, and he's had some double faulting issues in a few of his matches. A couple as he was trying to close out Alcaraz. 45 double faults in the tournament so far. Oh, was 46. Yeah. And it wasn't particularly close. It required a massive movement from my head here courtside just to see who that landed. <laughs> Did you have to duck? that Robbie made as far as who's taking advantage of the short ball right now. Djokovic isn't hitting any ball short. He's hitting, he always hits with great length, but he's taking the ball a bit earlier, hitting it with more pace. 94 miles an hour, that winner. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Because it doesn't look... 94-ish? Not really. Yeah, it is the break. He's got that elastic energy, hasn't it, guys? Just so flexible that it's almost like a slingshot when he hits his ground strokes. And I remember when he really burst on the scene big time uh, in Canada. He beat the top three players in the world to win in 2007. His linear shots, his ability to change direction from the cross court to the down the line is what stood out head and shoulders above, above anything else in his game. And he started like that here early on. The drop shot always looks like it's the right play against Medvedev. He's in the seats. But look at how early, after hitting this ball, if you could see Medvedev, he's already running. He knew drop shot was coming a long time before it was hit. Got there comfortably, and he does a pretty good job off drop shots, even though you don't, his ground strokes don't have topspin normally, but they do on that ball. Got him. All right, so early on, Gordy Minispich told me he's going to serve him volley once or twice a game, but he's going to do it in the deuce court. He's not going to do it in the ad court. Love he hasn't game. hit one wide serve yet in the deuce court. He's gone <laughs> tee every time, and his one serve in volley was the one where he told me he's not going to serve volley in the ad. Did he think I'm a scout for the other, <laughs> the other team? He's given the exact opposite of what he's trying to do so far. There's a serving volley. Yeah. That's what he was supposed to do. And, and Goran Ibanezic has, obviously, he knew how to serve, had a volley. He won Wimbledon that way, 2001. Goran says that as Djokovic has gotten older, he's looking for easier points. He's beefed up his serve, and especially his second serve, getting him out of tight spots.
40 30. A couple of weeks later, he came here. By the time he played Medvedev, he he was spent. Medvedev got him in straight sets. Oh. And these fans saw how upset Djokovic was those last couple of changeovers of that match. Changeovers before 15. it was over. He crouched down and like was crying into his towel, and he was upset when he lost. And the, this place, these fans gave him the biggest ovation he'd ever had, which made him cry all Even the more. more. It was it was something. Coming into this match when they introduced the players, he got a big hand. Yeah, Djokovic was seemingly the favorite of the crowd. Yes. Medvedev, for his part, said of that 2021 win here at the Open, his first major. He said, when I beat him, I managed to play better than myself. And I need to do that again. There is no other way. I mean, it's an interesting comment. Having said that, I don't think Djokovic played Djokovic level in that match. That whole tournament. Yeah. For Djokovic to make the final, he was going for a calendar year slam. He yeah. obviously cares so much about history and having every record that you possibly can have mm -hmm. the whole tournament he was struggling you could see he was he got through still to the finals to his credit and just how good he is I do think if you could pick one player not to play against, if you're really, really nervous, it would be Medvedev because he is 40, going to make 15. you hit excellent shots over and over and over to win points. And so it was too much for Djokovic in that final. Medvedev's on the board. Djokovic He's on the board with a fist rally from his side, set. Mary. And I'm just looking up to the player box of Daniel Medvedev, and Gilles Savara is wearing his New York Rangers hat. And by the way, that hat is undefeated. He broke it out in the 2021 uh, US Open. Obviously, Daniel went all the way to win it. And he didn't bring it last year. He's broken it out again this year. Well, I also spoke to Gilles Savara before the match. You're a very chatty man. I am, and he gave me absolutely nothing. <laughs> In fact, he said, I'm telling you nothing, <laughs> well, I think was the exact wording. Well, 
a little bit of a nervous start from Medvedev. Made a double fall. The balls were landing fairly short. That last point, as Robbie said, that was the best rally from Medvedev, where he hit it crisply and with depth and with some pace. And we'll see now if, now that he's got the, the heart rate down to about 150 or so, he'll be able to hang in these rallies. We need to keep a close eye on the accuracy of both these guys' serves. I think if you can get in returns of the other guy, it's going to be invaluable given how long some of these rallies are. Wow. Remember how Goran told me he's going to have, Djokovic is going to have to be ready to suffer. He suffered at this point by the end of it. Very physical point. And all of a sudden, Medvedev's length is perfect. 15, 30. Medvedev wins it on the 36th shot. When you're 36 years old, you don't want to have to hit 36 shots, do you? with a short point after that long rally, pays off. And I can tell you that Chi umpire was very generous at the time there. I was keeping a beady arm right behind Greg Allensworth. And I watched it go down to 3-2, and then he, he switched it off. And Novak still had about another four or five seconds before he delivered the first serve. Wow. Keep us honest on that, Robbie. Yeah, no, I think, isn't there a rule of 36 shots equals an extra four <laughs> or five seconds? I'm not sure if that's actually written in the rules. <laughs> Medvedev's going to have to figure this part of the game out. So 36-shot rally. Djokovic obviously exhausted. He went with a 84-mile-an-hour second serve serve and volley got away with it because you can get right on top of the net and did it again the next point and now he probably has his lungs back if he needs to hit a 20 shot rally he probably can
That's good. Again at the net. Team and family Djokovic. Opening set. Men's final of the 2023 US Open. And he's come out well. little surprised at a couple of things that we've seen early in this match. Oh. One of them is Medvedev serve. His fastest serve has been 121 miles an hour. Oh. He's 6'6". Six, six. Why does he go making, fatter? Yeah, he's not making many first serves. He's serving at 36% on the first serve percentages. There's a lot of mm. serving issues for Medvedev early on in this match. And Gilles Servara, his coach. That's twice now that Djokovic has gotten lobs over Medvedev's head and waited, stayed back, hit another ground stroke, just started the point. A little surprised because he's done such a good job when he has gotten to the net. On the race. 121. I'm just not quite as obsessed with that butterfly as I should be, I guess. So Medvedev holds. All right, Robbie, Koenig, explain this to me down there, okay? So Novak has Djokovic won 23 major titles. He's First trying to seven. win his fourth US Open. He's won three French Opens. And of course, in the age of Rafa Nadal, that's pretty good. He's won seven Wimbledons, 10 Australian Opens. The other hard court major. Why is, has he done so much better in Australia than New York? Yeah, it's a tough question. 2021, big asterisk, because those four matches that he played coming into the final here, I think he was he was spent physically. He lost the, every single one of his matches was over three hours. So, it would be the worst guy to play in that scenario.
something Stan in recent history in this final. 15 left. Beat him straight up. I've got, to, I've got to remember a rink of 2016. Six. He dropped uh, the first set in a tiebreak. Yeah, and then that was he won the first set in a tiebreak, I should say. And then Babrinka got him 6 3 in the fourth. In 2013, when he lost to Nadal, he had that epic semi against Stan. And, and I wonder if that gassed him. So I'm trying to explain away these losses, Mary. Okay. And in the early days, it was peak Federer and Nadal who got him. Andy Murray, well, you've got to give Andy at least one one against him in a major final. That was so that in was 2012, yeah. after, after Djokovic had won the first two sets against Andy Murray. Yeah, the other way around. It was Murray who won the opening two sets, 30, and then 15. Djokovic came back and took it to a yes. fifth. Yeah. But I just wonder if the stars haven't aligned here in the big matches like they have in Australia. It's, it's a tough one to explain. Mm. won his first U.S. Open in 2011. 40, he beat Nadal. 50. That was a crazy semi when he was down two match points to Roger Federer and slapped those two forehand winners and ended up winning. And Djokovic won it again in 2015 against Federer. And then he beat Del Potro in 2018. A big forehands and Djokovic pulls out to a 5-2 lead in this opening set. Djokovic leads five game points. But he had a love 30. He did. And, and he had a 15-30 after a 36-shot rally. And Djokovic oh. was gassed. He served volley twice and got away with both. 
So if Medvedev can hold here. Mm. It's just one break separating them. And I did say if. If he can oh, hold here. 15. Djokovic's serve game at least is going to have some enjoyable moments to watch, I would think. There'd be a little pressure in that game. Boy, that was horrid rhythm. That first serve from Medvedev. Oh. No, I think when you miss time a serve that badly, your second serve is in danger. And that's exactly what happened. In the glasses, that's Medvedev's wife, Daria. Oh. Beautiful little kid. Medvedev hits so many shots that when he hits them, I think there's, there's no way that can go in. <laughs> Racket face looks open. It has no spin at all. He's taking strange steps towards the ball. <laughs> Help! But most of them go in. Thirty, forty. If Medvedev holds this game, having saved a set point, it'll make that next service game even a little juicier. Advantage. You can see that Novak's a, a little edgy because. After the love pit, he must return on the second serve. I, but the camera picked it up enough, but he was very annoyed with that. I did see that. Yeah, yeah he, he knows that he must try to get out of this game. Oh, he did. have to serve for it, and yeah, Medvedev's helping him. Those players now talking Advantage. to their box. And Robbie, it, isn't it so loud in there that I don't know that they can hear the player box? You know, with the roof closed. Everything just echoes in here. It is so loud. Thank you. So tough to hear anything your box is telling you. is going to need some of these first serves. That has eluded him for most of this set. Game Medvedev. Oh. 
Djokovic leads five games to three. First set. Because I love seeing players go through the difficult times, somewhat excited that Medvedev managed to hold serve there, save a couple of set points. Djokovic serving for the set now. Hasn't been broken, hasn't faced break point. But you're always a little nervous serving for a set. And you're even more nervous when you've had a couple set points and you haven't converted yet. So we'll see how Djokovic handles this. Tell you what, that was one heck of a volley. Best return by Foley set on a SMV. Glued it to the shoelaces of Djokovic. What's interesting is Medvedev should know that Djokovic is going to serve volley a little bit today. He's done it the last couple times they've played, and yet he is standing to return six feet further back than normal that he has from first round through the semifinals on the first serve and three feet further back on the second serve. I'm Medvedev here at almost. It's hard because Djokovic does have a nice serve down the tee. He's won a couple free points there, but I'd still be in the back of my head thinking there's a chance he's going to throw in serve volley again out wide. Didn't serve in volley, but hit the wide serve beautifully. And I wish I could tell you 30, where Medvedev hit the forehand from, but I couldn't see him any longer. <laughs> he was at our screen. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm sitting courtside and I couldn't see him. <laughs> I think he went into the tunnel. Funny how the ad court Djokovic's serve isn't as effective. He he doesn't have the wide one. At least he's not as comfortable with that. And often he's going down the tee, and that just puts Medvedev in the center of the court. Now you've got to hit great shots. to take yourself to set point again. 40-15. Another brutal baseline rally that time, and it was one big swat from Djokovic. One backhand that he injected a little extra pace. Make the box up and a little happier. With the opening set. 
seats quickly, please. Thank you. McConaughey is sitting in the Djokovic box. Oh. Cheering for Matt. No, just kidding. <laughs> Brady has become good friends with Novak. He's been here. He was at the French Open, remember? Two athletes there who you have used their age as experience. Smarts. This guy's very smart too. See what he tries to do yeah, better, differently. Exactly. He's got to figure things out. It'll start with serve. Let's for serve. serve. And we'll see if he makes any adjustments on the return games. Medvedev. Oh. Interesting point from the standpoint, Medvedev trying not to Ladies be pushed around. He was standing up closer to the baseline. He had Djokovic server. defending a bit. And that is something that Medvedev's tried to do a little bit more this summer when I've been watching him. He's tried to hit the ball a little harder. He's tried to go for a little bit more and take it earlier. Djokovic, four more returns in play off first serve. But that number is getting a little closer. Early in the match, Medvedev wasn't making returns off Djokovic's first serve. He has started putting them back in play. Another double, though. Dude. Interesting thing is when these two have had short rallies, the under five shot rally, that is being dominated by Djokovic. Everything else pretty even. Once the five to nine and the over nine shot rallies, those are almost equal. <laughs> Part of that is Djokovic serving volley, getting Medvedev. some three points that way. Medvedev's serve hasn't been hitting on all cylinders yet, but this set so far, he's four or four when he's gotten them in. Oh, of three when he's had to hit second serves. How do you try to knock Djokovic off his pins? I'm not sure that you should if, ah. if you're Medvedev because I don't think he has Dude. that top line power from the back of the court. Part of the reason I wouldn't teach his strokes to anyone is he is all arm. It's, there's not really the shoulder turn and hips giving you the power. He just arms it. Not quite the technique of his opponent. No. Lucky that he's got arms that are six foot six in length. So he does still produce some power. Like that. Yeah. Advantage. Medvedev.
Second double fault in this game. Yes. Five and all. right away in this set. So the adjustment Medvedev. that Medvedev seems to be making is he's trying to play a little more aggressively in this set. He's hitting the ball harder. That time he worked his way into the net after just one shot. Game Medvedev. First game. Mistake and Medvedev is pretty good as well when he wins the first set. Absolutely. It's 47 and 1 this year. <laughs> I guess they should just go ahead and shake hands. It's over. <laughs> oh. Classic line and dumb and dumber. So you tell him. 15 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I think it's better than the <laughs> one in a million that was <laughs> talked about in that movie. Yes. Bobby, I don't know if you can tell down courtside, but it does seem as though Medvedev is trying to get the ball bigger. Definitely. Definitely. It's staying in the air longer. You can hear the sound coming off of his strings. There's no question. He knows he has to up the tempo. I think he thought about playing a drop shot there and changed his mind mid-swing, Jimmy, given the kind of drop shots he's already attempted haven't been great. Serving volley works. One game left, second set. Jimmy, I'd like to hear from you and Mary how, how you rate the Djokovic volley, and I'm going to compare it to, to Alcaraz because I was having this discussion with uh, Feliciana Lopez earlier today. Uh, I'd like a, a mark out of 10 for well, their proficiency in the forecourt. That's hard to answer because he has the worst overhead <laughs> yeah. in today's game. 15. And he covers the net well. He doesn't stick the volleys, but he is there for the volleys, and he seems to find a good spot for them. So I have to give him a 7, not a 10.
six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tough luck. But he's hit some beautiful volleys already today. That's the first time he Thirty got love. a little tangled up, and it was the first time Medvedev just sort of dribbled it over. He didn't try to hit a pass. Djokovic has a good sense of when to get it. Yeah. When to apply the pressure. Let for serve. Measured that smash, Jimmy, he just did. for you. Yes, he did. He hit about 60 miles an hour. 30, you know, 50. DiCaprio enjoying the tennis final as well. That was a ridiculous return. And then he heard me say he's got the worst <laughs> overhead on tour. So you know, Make sure you give him that point back. Yeah. A six to a seven, Jimmy. <laughs> he's back, yeah. With a bullet. Oh! See the length that these are all. able to keep, but especially Djokovic. His ability to measure the length of the court. There's never been anyone like him. Perfect example of it there. your answer on the Alcaraz volley and how good you think that is. So can we bang on about what a great all-round game he's got? Yes. Where would you put his? Yeah, I think it's it's a little higher because he comes in a little bit more often, I think. Great drop volley, obviously. Um, he's one of the guys, the reason I'm impressed with his game is never seen anyone that can hit a forehand from four feet behind the baseline and then in a the blink of an eye is on top of the net for that shot. It wasn't even an approach shot, I'd say. I've hit a great forehand and now I'm going to come in and I'm so fast, I'm and there. And he's been playing that way since he was eight. Yeah. that I'm not, it's not as though he's facing John Isner serve. He's facing 124 mile an hour serve. match. He said, first of all, I want to say that he is able to change his return position, but he would do it if he only really feels that he cannot win returning this way, in other words, standing deep. That's the main thing. Well, in a set and a half, he's won 10 points on the Djokovic serve. I don't know when it is that you decide, hey, time to try something else. 
gotten away with one there and he knows that the lob was a little short I think they would have expected it to be a little higher than what it was guys yeah, I think the 27th shot there was no <laughs> jump no, left no in legs. Medvedev's legs yeah and that serve looked as though his legs were a little heavy, Djokovic. So this second serve, maybe. Get something a little short. Oh, he went big. Well, just to conclude that thought, Jimmy. 41. As Jos says, and it's, it's so tough to be inside the people's brains or understand what do they feel. And I think that people don't understand what he feels, what he sees, what he believes in his head. And you're, you're exactly right, Jimmy. The question is, when does the tennis IQ come into play? When does he decide to say, hey, this is not working. The numbers tell, tells me it's not working. Now is the time to mix things up. And I guess that's down to, you know, decision making and being a smart tennis player, right? It's interesting because I don't, it, Djokovic is doing a masterful job of, they have some 30 shot rallies on his service game. So obviously he's in a rally like that. He's thinking, I, that's what I want. I'm fine. serving volleys that are 15. simplifying some of the service game for Djokovic. Nine unforced errors to zero, but he's also hit six winners to two. More aggression. More errors, but again, Medvedev's the one who feels as though every service game's an adventure. And here's another anxious moment for him. What about the subtle brilliance there on that chip return of serve? Just to get the ball back and play. Love it. Interesting in that Medvedev has been outplayed for almost an hour and a half. And yet, he's old serve here. Yeah. 
game. Still very much in this. On serve in the set. This is one of those seasons where Djokovic has been fit enough to play all four majors in the same season. He's already won a couple of them. Yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a reasonably good year so far. He's <laughs> lost one match on hard court. Mm. And it was to Medvedev. Yeah, it was to this guy. from Djokovic. Thirty love. All the little things seem to be going Djokovic's way. Even you don't often get away in today's game with a chip approach cross court. from the net. And again, it's something Goran Ivanisevic has encouraged him to do, especially as he's aged. Feels as though Djokovic has been more to the net than just 14 times, that stat we just showed you. Game, Djokovic. Fourth ace. From Djokovic. Second set. Djokovic is doing to Medvedev what Medvedev does to almost everyone else that he plays, and that is he's holding serve in about a minute and a half, mm. and then you have to grind and work and fight and hit a million balls to hold serve. And often, towards the end of the set, you falter. You've had that pressure every game, and you struggle to hold one of the times. Favorite spot to hit the drop shot, the back end down the line into that quadrant of the court. He has so much feel on it. We see him do it so often on clay. Yeah, that one was a little lower, but it had a juicy amount of spin on it. As you saw, as soon as it hit the ground, it stopped. Oh. Strangest looking plays I've ever seen from Medvedev. He ran around his forehand and hit a inside out flat side spin backhand <laughs> where the follow through almost hit himself in the ear. <laughs> Don't you make fun of my Medi. Sorry. I mean, that uh, was amazing. I love this guy. <laughs> and he's the best interview in tennis. <laughs> very quick, very funny. 30 15. And really, when you look at the numbers in this match so far, the fact that he is in it is almost absurd. He's won six of 19 second serve points. His opponent, 12 of 19. His opponent's lost three first serve points. He's lost 10. I know the person lost the point on serve in this. In this set, I, I believe, 40, to, to your 50. point. You are right. 12 for 12 when he gets a first or second. Every point he's served so far for Djokovic has been a love hold. Oh. And the 
reason I'm sort of pointing it out is it's difficult to 40, dominate 30. a player as good as Medvedev for so long, forever. He's dominated him for an hour and a half, but he hasn't pulled away yet. Oh. And Medvedev has struck twice the number of unforced errors. Yeah, all the numbers are crazy. Yeah. It, does, it should be already over. <laughs> uh -oh. 4 to 15 now to Deuce. It's the beauty of the scoring system in this game. Deuce. We've said it so often, Jimmy. I don't know if the person who invented it is a genius or the devil in disguise. array of shots at Djokovic when he's playing these long rallies. He's hit depth, he's hit hard, he'll suddenly throw in a slice. Medvedev was expecting a drop shot, and the slice back in went deep, coaxed the air out of him, and he's got himself a break chance. Then Medvedev decides to serve a volley. Was that what that was? <laughs> It was a serve with a, I don't know what, I don't even know how to describe the whirlwind of a forehand swinger that he just threw at Djokovic. Strange. Nine yeah. of the last ten long rallies had gone Djokovic's way over nine shots. He just lost this one. Advantage, Medvedev. What in the world? That looked like he was fine. He just hit it back in in the net and decided to throw some hysterics our way. Thank you. Players are ready. Breathing very heavily still.
fighting. <laughs> He's still on the ground. Yeah, no, you could see Novak's legs getting heavy and as that man. point wore on. Is that Medvedev's? Medvedev. Is that what he's trying to do? Is take the legs out of Djokovic? I mean, maybe that's why he's a mile behind the baseline. He's just trying to make every point as physical as long as he can. Going with the whole age thing, but you can see Djokovic just slowly. His feet were no longer very quick. Then he's yeah. taking long steps and trying hard Thank to fill his lungs. Even now, he's bent over. Trying to recover. This is some important game for both of them, huh? And this really is breathtaking the way he opens the court up and then feeling the length with the back end. And I think it's the one thing he has. He has a few more options than Medvedev. Strikes tend to be a bit straighter. It's tough for Daniel to open up the court as well as Novak does. He's finish. taking his time, Djokovic getting into the return position. Oh. Wandering around beyond that baseline. He doesn't want another long round. And goes big early and misses. Advantage. It's unusual for him to Medvedev. physically show his fatigue like this, isn't it? It is. So, and it's still early in the match. We're yeah. set and a half in. The game for Medvedev. New balls, please. In position. Just a bit over a foot on the first serve. Three feet. Over three feet on the second serve return. That's just too easy. 15 love. And you got to think if you're Medvedev, don't you, that Djokovic showed you he's a little tired. Sir volley will happen more and more, short in the points. He's got to almost expect it at this point. Fifteen on. Jimmy Connors got to the net more and more as he got older. His 91 semifinal run here, where he turned 39 during the Open. He was getting up there much more than he ever had. He was a lover of the long rally. And he adjusted with age. Oh. Djokovic had served volleyed 15. eight times in the tournament, in the whole tournament. Coming into this match. Yeah, he won six of them. He does a good job serving volley. In this match, he's served volleyed already eight times. He's won seven of them. We're set and a half in. Surprised that Medvedev has made two errors in the last two points. He's got Djokovic looking as though he's wobbling physically. And that would send the signal to Medvedev. You're, anything that touches your racket, you put it in. Oh! 
First double fault of the match for Gaunt for Djokovic. Air is there easily. And again, Djokovic showing his fatigue. The drop shot was what showed the fatigue. He'd had enough of that rally because, as you can see, Djokovic, Medvedev wasn't that yes. far behind the baseline. And Djokovic tried the drop shot from a little bit behind the baseline. That's not going to work. Djokovic just couldn't hang in the point. So, Deuce. He hadn't lost a point on his serve up until this game. Another long rally. If you're Medvedev, you got to be at least thinking, okay, he's probably going to serve in volley here. Now I'm not so sure it's a second serve. She wants a chair to shut up the person screaming. He missed That's that. an amazing. 88 miles an hour, Jimmy. Advantage. No, it's because Medvedev is suddenly thinking, man, I can win this. He's been under the gun all match until the last few minutes. But he's thinking, I've taken his legs. Let's, now all I got to do is put the ball in. And all of a sudden, he's made three bad errors in this game. get the second win back because his legs are are really yeah. heavy all of a sudden no double faults till this game two double faults he's bending over at the waist after his serve he's doing all the tells that aren't ideal if you're a Djokovic fan really the only decision for Djokovic here on this point is do I serve volley out wide or do I try to end it with one serve one ace down the tee Shows the serve and volley, missed the serve. This stat's amazing, as Medvedev has not passed well at all. Victor Djokovic, don't you just keep keep getting in. Don't get in the 30-shot rallies at this point. He's got to quit serving T in the ad. It just puts Medvedev in the center of the court, and now you're in for a long rally.
Jimmy, you always say that that is the tell yes. that Djokovic, when he kind of falls in on himself. Yes, that is the tell that he's, normally that he's nervous. I don't think that this is a nervous thing. This is actually, my legs are not, I can't keep my balance right now. Let's preserve. Oh, that hurts him. That hurts him. Electronic call. Complaining to Gregory Allensworth in the chair. I mean, I'm up, we're up here in the booth. We got Robbie down. Did you hear a let there? Because it seems to me like the players have complained all turn. Yeah, it looked well over. Yeah, it well looks over. over. It looks so clear. Yeah. I think a little bit of an argue as well, just to get himself a bit more yeah. time. Smart. Two years ago when Djokovic lost this final to Medvedev. And I said, you don't want to play Medvedev if you're very nervous. He was very nervous. He's not the guy you pick. Yes. You know who you don't want to play if you're really tired? <laughs> the Medvedev. This guy. He does have that great ability to provoke errors. Daniel Medvedev. Big chance for him here for 5-3 in the second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was not as easy as it looks. <laughs> it was actually the first time that Medvedev came up with a crazy good return off the serve and volley. And I mean, again, how does that stroke get where it got? But it was perfect, and the half volley drop shot was even better. Yeah, he needs some help. That's that's not something Djokovic always gets. He he can't rely on the fans all the time. He needs to rely on himself, and he knows that he's only been doing that for about 20 years. talking about Jimmy you, you've also got to pay some attention when you're talking about the quality of someone's volume the ability Djokovic. for them to do it on the biggest points in the biggest moments just tick the net a little bit that's why the apology the apology rocket yeah you're right Robbie he's he's been spectacular up at the net so far 16 of 18 in the back thank you players are ready and again it's when he does it when he needs it. Can you 
can't believe it. Missing lobs wide is about as frustrating a shot as you can hit. There's level. no reason to be tempting the width. It's all about height and depth. And especially when the opponent has closed on top of the net, Jimmy. It's like a double whammy. I don't, I, it looked as though they're trying to tell him how to hit a backhand. <laughs> Finish more with your left hand. It. I guess they feel like he's lost it a bit. Yeah, but that's. Yeah, no, I think what he was saying to them before that was the ball is skidding through so low. What must I do? Oh, uh, yeah. And that's what Alcaraz was complaining about. Yeah, that, that ball's so yeah. skiddy, yeah. And low. Oh. Novak was get ready under to it. Walk. Get over it. Yeah, Djokovic has given away this game from the looks of his ready. Left, position. second serve. Ball in the corner is the service left. we ever seen love 15 Novak Djokovic I know early in his career he actually default sometimes because he had some breathing issues He'd and retire was, yeah but I don't remember in the last 10 years or so ever having him be physically unable to keep moving and that looks as though his shot tolerance has gone from 35 to still pretty high 15 16 but the legs go right around that number Medvedev, when he beat him here two years ago, 6 4, 6 4, 6 4. 15 on. And you could tell that Djokovic was gassed. But he was emotionally gassed as well. Well, that that's a that's good call. It sure was. Oh, 
from Medvedev. Yeah, it was a good time 15. to come in, but the volley just sat there. Let second serve. <laughs> second serve, serving ball. And that's worth a couple of times for him. Djokovic knows every shot that Medvedev is hitting. He's 40, always guessing right. 50. And the one thing that's always perplexed me a little is I would think that Medvedev's ball is one of the easiest balls to volley on the tour because it doesn't have the normal amount of spin and dip. It's flat, so it's a straight line. You should be able to volley it well, but players haven't taken advantage of that. Djokovic sort of forced into it here. Because physically, he can't handle the 30 shot rallies over and over. Medvedev's forehand cross court is it's unbelievable how much angle he can get on the run and it was a shot that really hurt Alcaraz in the previous round he peppered that corner beautifully it's world class on the run so good out of his forehand corner Having a look at his last three service games, he made all of them, all the first serves, four out of four. When you go back three service games, it went down to seven of 14 in the previous one prior to this one. And in this last service game, he only made two first serves out of six. So he is walking a tightrope there. Oh, look, how, look how big Novak's kid has gotten. <laughs> Impish little fellow, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, Follows his knows. dad around everywhere. Yeah, I wonder if he knows how important these next 15, 15 minutes <laughs> of this set are because if he loses this set, it's already been a 72 minute set to this point. He 
miss that. If he can win this set, Djokovic, if he can 30, steal, you can see how important he, both players know that this. If he can win this set, two set lead, you can almost take a walkabout for a set. Have a little rest if you're Djokovic. Serve and folly, drop shot every two points. Save your energy. Save your energy. I just get the feeling that he had at the Wimbledon final against Alcaraz. 30 all. Uh, those set points to go two sets to love up. And I think we probably all thought, had he got those, it's game over. And you get the same feeling here, two sets to love up. It's a heck of a mountain to climb. Yeah. So good for Medvedev. That was a tough shot. It was a pretty good drop shot from Djokovic. And again, Medvedev. 40, 30. The ball has zero rotation on it normally. But on that ball, he is able to flick it with some spin and keep it in play. Jimmy, I think it was the only spot in the court he could hit that shot yeah. in order to stay alive in the rally. And he did it against Alcaraz on a number of occasions. Got him. I mean, that's another tire drop shot, but both times off the drop shot, Djokovic knew where he was going, and I can't imagine why Medvedev hit the overhead there. He was too out of position, yeah. wasn't he? He was Deuce. on balance on, on the 26th shot. Djokovic found the pass. Remember that rally of 26 shots between Federer and Nadal, fifth set, Australian Open 2017. This wasn't far away. It's amazing because Medvedev's legs looked a little tired trying to hit that over. He didn't quite have the jump. Normally that can affect your first serve, the next point. Medvedev stepped to the line and just cranked. Djokovic doesn't win this set, and he's going to be thinking, I got a long way. Shot a little early in the point, but again, Djokovic knows where the ball's going. Thought he hit a pretty good lob. Wasn't good enough. Serve and volley 
if you're Djokovic, you better start throwing it in twice a game. Doesn't want to overexert himself to hold just to hold serve here. We make the tie break tough. Djokovic stretching and shaking out his legs. Yeah, is that cramp? Because I can't imagine. He's the most flexible human I've ever seen almost. It's because he's getting stiff. That worries you a little bit. And his serve is gone, and maybe that's the leg. That looked as though often when you start cramping, it's on the serve. You jump, and you get a little catch. it over again. Fourth double fault. And they've all come in this set. Well, everything's happened ever since that three-all game where they had a very long drawn-out return game. Physical points, and Djokovic hasn't been the same since. I mean, if you're mad, but to protect the serve and volley, you got to expect serve and volley here. Point for Daniil Medvedev. Advantage, Medvedev. Thank you.
Held his ground up there, didn't he? He just knows what yes. happened hitting every ball. Every passing shot, he's standing there waiting. He's 21 of 23 when he gets to the net. I don't know why you'd hit another ground stroke in this match if you're Djokovic. You're exhausted. Just pull a John McEnroe, return and come in. Robbie, was that the first time? Did Medvedev's legs see it move well to that side, or was he just wrong footed? I think he was more wrong footed, Jimmy. Just wrong footed. He was looking for that before he went down the line there from Novak, and Novak went back behind him. Thing is one of the things Gordon even his yes. told me is sometimes Medvedev when you're in baseline rallies with him he's so used to sprinting to the open court he even puts his head down and just starts running and you got to go behind him. I don't know if Djokovic has done that much. Better figure something out here in the next couple minutes another brutal game. Be on to that serve, shouldn't it? I mean, you, yes. Yes. <laughs> you have no choice. That's a safety valve that Djokovic has in this match that he's been able to get out of tough jams with the serve and volley at any time. Even right down the center in this ad court, got away with a few serve and volleys. Let for serve. Djokovic got a horrible bounce there mm. midway through that rally when he looked like he was in charge of it. The ball stayed so low off the line. And here is racket crack off the, the court, huh, brother? Yep. Spot on, Mary. All right, again, the choice for Djokovic to serve volley out wide or try to end it with an ace T because Medvedev should be expecting serve wide. I mean, Medvedev left the building five minutes early knowing that that's where it's going, and he still couldn't come up with a return 
even in, but there's no space for him to hit it because he's so far back and Djokovic can get in so tight. He's going to have to move forward at some point on that return. Djokovic pulls off a set point and takes this into a tiebreak. Six games all, second set tiebreak. Each player receives one additional challenge. This is a silly comment, but this almost feels like a fifth set tiebreak from the standpoint of <laughs> how quickly, important please, this tiebreak is Thank you. to determine who wins this match. Yeah, only two please. players have been able to Ladies win a tiebreak off Novak at a major this year. Alcaraz, that second set that we spoke about at Wimbledon. Of course, Enzo Quaco at the Australian Open. Don't know if I would have started that comment with, of course, Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> 16 and 2. Novak in tiebreakers at the majors this year. Again, a cross court forehand. One, but but I said, of course, because he's become a bit of a, a cult figure in the locker room. When Novak was going on all these runs, the boys were telling me, I keep bringing up his name, Enzo Quaco's the man in tar breakers <laughs> against Novak. It's okay. um, a good name. Djokovic needed to make the approach that good. Medvedev. Tried to finish it with the backhand. And it's been good enough just to come in. He, Djokovic on four stairs now, 18 to 15. He had zero for the first four games or so. This all happened when the legs started to go. Concern for Djokovic is Medvedev. can he keep defending his second serve as well as he has in the second set, guys? I'm not sure. No, it's hard pressed because he's struggling with the long rallies now. And there's Stan Smith, a little upset with himself. He had it. is such a Medvedev. meticulous technician. And wind fatigue breaks in on anybody, form breaks down. Hit the, hit the, I'm an He's hitting 
his calves, he's hitting his thighs. His, about 15, 16 shots seem to be where the legs really go right now. I was about to say, Medvedev, if you remember the start Three, of this two. set, he had Medvedev. a boatload of unforced errors early on. He's cleaned that up partly because he sees Djokovic suffering. He wants to keep him suffering, not give him any free points. The only time he's made the unforced errors lately is when he thinks it looks like he's going to win the set. Then all of a sudden, he'll miss a couple shots. Any break is gone. Djokovic had a couple opportunities to take the ball early and come in. And again, he's been Four so successful all. coming to the net. 20 of 21 points in this set. Hard to hit through, Medvedev. That first set, that 6-3 set, took 48 minutes. This one's not over yet, and it's taken 100 minutes. Stand up, everybody, stand up. In your life, have you <laughs> ever seen anything like Five. that? I was waiting for you to say yeah, that, Robbie. Four. I mean, that was... Medvedev. You knew that Djokovic's legs were completely done, but he managed to hit an amazing drop shot. I thought it was going to be good enough. 23 shots it took for Daniel Medvedev to take the lead.
Let's amp up the aggression if you're Djokovic and still not make it. That was a point where halfway through the point I felt this is what it feels like when you're a little kid playing against the wall trying to win a U.S. Open. No matter how hard you hit it, the ball just keeps coming back. Just get the feeling this one is balanced on the width of an atom right here. Two sets to love. One set away. <laughs> Fifteen love. What a clean start for Novak Djokovic. Forty left. Anytime you have a 104 minute set, yes, someone has a letdown the next set. We'll see which player it is. Obviously, it can't be Medvedev, or he's game. all kinds of Joker. trouble. Djokovic held serve comfortably. First game, third set.
Don't mind the play from Djokovic. There's no reason at this point, especially 30 love down in the game with your opponent serving. Don't overextend yourself. Feeling anything, drop shot come in, fine. Game, Medvedev. One game one. Third set. Checking on him. <laughs> yeah, he's he saying, give, give one moment. I'm, I, <laughs> he scraped his elbow a little bit. <laughs> I'm amazed. Daniel not ready to get up yet. Oh, it's a nice moment. <laughs> oh, he slipped on that line and lost his foot. for the eight count. Yeah, he does. <laughs> doesn't want any help. Fifteen. Right, there's been a little lull to start this third set compared to what was happening towards the end of the intensity of the end of that second set. But here's an important point for Djokovic. What do you think, sir? And volley out onto the form for the 3,000th time and <laughs> win every point? Starting, I'm not in Medvedev's camp or anything. I'm starting to get annoyed. <laughs> just, no, even if you do it's just said to make the adjustment then. Get forward, said to him. Don't complain about it to me. Yeah. It's the first time I've seen Gilles so animated. Sometimes he just walks out of the stadium when Medvedev is playing, doesn't he? But yeah, that's got to be frustrating. Djokovic holds. He won it home. What 
do you think of those rules, Robbie? Love Just move the goalposts on me there, Mary. Just move the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're spot on. Djokovic was asked to make the most ridiculous half volley pick up per score in the seven volley. It was 15 there. And you know, for me, that, that counts double, triple. Be able to do it and execute it on the biggest of points that in that was, second set. That was a break point. Yeah. And that was when his legs were going. Yes. Was only broken 15, in his first service game. 40. Hasn't been broken since. Close to number 24. <laughs> Mom, dad, also there, that's not his father. Wife, son, and it's not often that Novak Djokovic enjoys the luxury of having Ash Stadium cheer for him the way they are tonight. He walked out on the court and he was the obvious favorite. These people know how much majors mean to Novak, how much history means to him. They know what winning the Open means to Novak. 15 love. Much smaller team, always, for Medvedev. He travels light compared to Novak. about all the tremendous coaching that Djokovic has had from the time he was a little boy. And his father needed to go to Loan Sharks to get him to Nikki Pilic's academy just outside of Munich. Gorni Venizovic met him there when Novak was 12. That's how long they've known each other. Wow. And at age 12, Goran knew what he was looking at when he was looking at this guy.
That was this very month, it was September of 1990. And he moved to Vicky Pilcher's Academy there just outside of Munich. What a great tennis Brian Nicky had. Ivanizovic, of course, got to number two in the world himself, a Wimbledon champ. And he also helped, let's not forget, Marin Cilic win this event in 2014. He's also worked with Raonic and Burdick. You want to want a guy like Goran Ivanizovic on, on your side, don't you? He even talks to Jimmy Arias, for God's sake. <laughs> Sure, he tells me the opposite of what they're going to do. <laughs> this is a bit shocking what we're seeing here from Djokovic. So he's been hanging into this match physically for quite a while now. He gets the breakthrough. He's got a two set lead. Mom is back to looking distraught. As he's donated a couple of points, and he hasn't been broken in the match. Wow. Medvedev over two. Oh. Second serve to work with. Oh. And that's out. We're back on serve in the third. So much noise. Backhands we just saw from Novak Djokovic. Nasty 30, slice. 40. And that angle. And Jimmy, at the end of this rally, there was a glance from Daniil up to Gilles as if to say, what should I do? Djokovic two games away. Djokovic leads four games to two. Third set. There had been one break in this match for almost the first three hours. There's been three successive breaks in the last few minutes. 
Medvedev's going to have to figure out how to get that break back. He's only going to have two chances at most. Djokovic did it in 2015 and 2021, and he's trying to do it. He's already done this. He's reached all four Grand Slam finals in the same season. And he's trying to become the oldest U.S. Open men's winner in the Open era. Ken Rosewald did it back in 1970. He was only 35. Different is he looking in the third set from that second set? Well, he's being helped by the points have been short for whatever Thirty reason. Nine. Medvedev has lost a little sting. Hit the ball just a little bit short of the servant volley keeps working. He's had a those physical points aren't happening over and over again. So Djokovic does have his legs. Federer's got 20 majors, Groff and Rafa Nadal have 22, Serena has 23. Djokovic trying to tie with Margaret Court at 24. From number 20, and it was almost like the national championships, the draws were smaller. Just having a look back, Mary, in 1960, it was a 32 draw, 61, 44 draw. Uh, yeah. 15. You know, 48 draws, two foreigners in the entire draw when she was winning her majors in Australian Open. She won 11 of them there. Yeah. And, you know, a, a lot of them were pre-Open era. So you have to compare apples with apples, 128 draw. Oh. So for me, it's indisputable that his numbers are just at a different level. Wow, it's Medvedev that suddenly, I'd love to at least see him have to make Djokovic serve it out. But it's not looking good. Fading fast. Because we do all know how much Djokovic worries about history, how badly he wants to put all doubt that he's the greatest of all time far in the rearview mirror.
That was an amazing point for three hours and 11 minutes in. Djokovic was absolutely pasting ground strokes, and Benvedev hung in there. 30 all. And finally, Djokovic actually misses a volley. Djokovic will now Djokovic serve for the championship. The three. Third set. Of his 23 major titles, 13 of them have come on hard courts. 10 Australians, three US Opens. He wants to make it four. down it only took three hours and 12 minutes <laughs> for, him to, for Medvedev to figure out that serve volley with forehand might be coming his <laughs> way
40-30. Championship point. Djokovic, a Grand Slam champion again. Novak Djokovic, his third major title of this season. His fourth US Open. 24 and counting. 24 and he still won.